For most data teams, one of the more challenging discussions you'll have as a team is that of naming conventions. It's something where there's a lot of ego involved, there's a lot of opinions, but it's something that's incredibly important. And while I understand this isn't the most glamorous part of the job, the decisions that you make with this can have a real impact on the performance and efficiency of you as an individual, as well as your whole team. So that's why in this video, I wanna talk about why good naming conventions are so important, particularly with DBT projects where you're starting from a blank slate, and why having good ones in place can save you time, it can save you energy, and possibly save you some money along the way. So reason number one for why naming conventions are so important, particularly with DBT, is that it helps you quickly understand the context of whatever it is you're working on. So in this case, we're talking about the context of a particular query, or maybe if you're in the database, what is this table or this view? What does this object represent? And if you have good naming conventions that are consistent and clear, you're not gonna have to think too much or think too hard about what something represents or what the context is that you're working on. And I know that this sounds really obvious, and of course we would all want something clear, the reality is, what at least what I've noticed and what I've experienced in my own career, is that when teams first get started, they go pretty quickly with building their models out. They want to go quick, it's easy, and they just need to get results out the door. But the result of that is things get very quickly pushed through, and you don't have a clear structure that is easy to follow. So you might have different developers building things their own way, adding their own prefixes, their own way of naming things, maybe shortening things. So within the same directory, things could look completely different for what you're building. And then as things slowly scale, you don't usually have a lot of time to go back and refactor things. So you just continually keep adding on, maybe new members join. And over time, you start to get these rabbit holes in this wide variety of namings that don't really seem to follow any sort of structure. So now not only is the top layer confusing, but if you're in a particular query, trying to parse through the underlying table references within a query can become a rabbit hole all in itself. And it's something that really only the original developer might actually understand. So obviously this is a pretty big waste of time and energy before you ever even get to adding value or building new features for whatever it is you're trying to work on. You're spending so much time trying to figure it out because the naming and the styling is just not consistent and not clear. Now on the flip side, of course, naming conventions might not solve every problem, but let's say you've built your project with clear conventions that are repeatable and followed by everybody. In that type of example, you could go into a query and quickly understand where data is coming from because the naming would be consistent. For example, if you're building in DBT, a staging layer, you go into a query and it has staging models. Everything is prefixed the same way. It's very easy to understand right away. You don't have to think twice about it. Plus you can understand what that represents. If we understand it is a staging model, we should know that staging represents something in particular. And most times that means it's one-to-one -one with the source data. So again, just by looking at it, we understand this is in the staging layer. Because it's in this layer, maybe that means we've deployed all of those as views. So we immediately understand it's a view and we understand that it's one-to-one -one with the source. So there's no joins or anything like that. Same thing with using facts or dimensions. If you're using that in a different layer, you understand that, okay, we're following a star schema. This is a fact table. So there's gonna be certain columns in there. Maybe it's just metrics and keys. And then you have dimensions, which means that would only be for context and there's not gonna be any metrics necessarily in there. And this is gonna vary based on your team, but the idea here is that if you're consistent with your strategy as well as your naming, together it just makes the mental workload of trying to figure out what's going on so much easier and it's gonna save you a ton of time. And all of this is gonna feel fairly uneventful in the moment, it's not some grand change that you're making, but the idea here is that this is gonna compound over time. Imagine how many queries you're gonna write, how many models you're gonna look at, how many new developers are gonna join, all of these over time, all of those individual moments where you don't have to try to think through and spend the mental energy to figure out the context of something, just having good naming conventions and good structure is gonna save you a lot of headaches and help you be more productive. Hey, real quick, I just wanna pop in and say, if you're brand new to DBT, maybe you're working on building a project or you just want a refresher on some of the key concepts, if you're enjoying this video and you want some more help from me, I'll have a link below for a free starter guide on DBT, it goes over some of the key concepts as well as some of the other important things that I've learned along the way building projects that I think will be really helpful for you. And it'll hopefully help save you some time, clear up some gaps so that you can be more effective with implementing it and avoid a lot of the common mistakes I see teams making. So again, if you're interested, there'll be a link in the description as well as the first comment below. But with that said, let's get back to the video. And this whole idea applies not just to the work that you're doing, but for your ability to review changes and make recommendations to other people's projects and making sure that it stays consistent. Which leads us to point number two is that clear naming helps keep your project consistent. And again, I recognize this sounds obvious, but there are secondary benefits to this aside from just saying, oh, my project looks nice, it's clean and organized. The real value here is that with your consistency, your project is going to become way easier to navigate. 
It's going to be easier to make changes to it. And it's going to be easier to analyze and review what other people are doing. And all of this together, again, is going to make you individually and your whole team way more efficient. Now, one of the bigger pushbacks on having a consistent and repeatable format for model naming, more so I would say with query formatting, if you want to extend that to this, is that it might limit your creativity as a developer. Because as developers, a lot of us, it's almost like an art form in a sense. We all like to be creative and have our own ways of doing things. It's almost like a form of creative expression for us nerds behind the computer. We're not drawing things, we're writing code and building things. And while of course I agree with that and there's truth to that, at the same time, we need to recognize that we are there to do a job. We are on a team and we've been hired to build our analytics platform. This isn't intended for us to do whatever we want just because we wanna be creative. There's obviously a trade-off, but the goal here is we are hired to be efficient, to help the company have better analytics and drive insights for the business. And that is the focus. And the more efficient we can be with that, the more productive we're gonna be and impactful we're gonna be for the business that we're trying to serve. Our customers are our business stakeholders and the rest of the business. A lot of this does come down to the leaders and the expectations that they set and then they enforce, as well as the leaders on the team, whether or not that's your title, you're setting the tone for what things should be. Our time and mental resources probably shouldn't be spent trying to track down and uncover what a particular query is trying to say because of inconsistent naming and the inability to quickly understand what's going on. And if you really think about it, this isn't going to limit your creativity just because you can't name something a certain way. Instead, it's going to give you one less thing to have to worry about so you can spend your mental energy on more higher level abstract things, which is really where the value of a lot of our skills are. It's in the thinking through logic and abstract connections between models and views and all these different objects. Point number three is that clear naming helps onboard future developers a lot faster it's pretty safe to say that most of us aren't going to be working on the same team or at the same company our entire life. It's possible, but especially as developers, we probably won't be working on the same piece of code for our entire career. That means we're gonna be gone at some point. And so that also means new people are gonna be joining. So this is something that lives beyond our own time. If the project isn't following clear naming conventions and it's all over the place, there's inconsistent ways of doing things, it's gonna be not only hard for people to pick up what you've done, after you leave, but it's also gonna be really hard to onboard people to your team. You're now gonna to have to explain all these different edge cases and try to account for why somebody did something the other way. And the more of these that you have, the more and more it starts to look like your team is not really organized. And it's also hard to tell somebody else to follow certain protocols or certain rules if you yourself or your team haven't followed that to begin with. But if you have been consistent and you do have clear naming conventions for your models, for your project, it's gonna be really easy for somebody to come in and just pick up where you left off or just copy what you've done before and follow the same workflow. You as a new team member are gonna start picking things up much faster and more importantly, start contributing faster because you know exactly what's expected, you know what the rules are, and you can start to use your own abilities to contribute in your own ways, but you know that you're at least following the rules of the general conventions that are put in place. And from a personal level, this is an area that's really important for me because as an independent consultant, I go into clients and it's typically more of a temporary type of relationship. I'll help them set up a foundational DBT project, set the conventions, provide documentation. And if I'm not personally following clear conventions and I'm just building things quickly without a real structure, how can I expect them to be successful long-term and continue to build an organized project? So that's why for me, it's and really for anybody, it should be really important to establish those strong conventions because that is gonna have a big impact on the success and scalability of the project as a whole. So as you build out your data architecture and particularly with your DBT project, it's going to be really enticing to move quick and just start building things in whatever way you see fit. But hopefully now you see why it's so important to establish upfront good naming conventions for your project and the result it can have in terms of your time, your energy, and overall efficiency as a team and an individual. So with that said, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.